Okay, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me via Zoom today is... Is Matthew, democracy is a good system of government, Haas. That's a really long middle name. Is that one word? Uh, yeah, it is. Just, just okay. <laughs> kind of like a German word. It's just like a lot of different letters. A lot of different kind syllables like and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, how do you... Uh, <clears throat> do you have to ever write that all out? Uh or do you or no, is it just, just a d i just do like a yeah d you know so mm-hmm. something tells me that's not your real middle name no it's not uh <clears throat> no my my middle name is alan because my parents named me after it's no one really they just they just like the name i guess but uh <laughs> were, they, were they big flash fans and named you after barry allen oh not really i don't oh, think okay. so uh, <laughs> So, um, and they actually spelled it the way that I don't like it spelled either. <laughs> so that kind of pisses me off a little bit because I like it because, like, on the you know, like on the, the Baha'i cards, I don't know why I'm whatever you're gonna, you're gonna hear the word Baha'i a few times in this um podcast, Absolutely. but yeah, uh, but um, you know, like on the Baha'i cards, they, they have like your name on it, whatever, yeah, they misspelled it as a l l e n. I actually. But my was actually spelled A L A N. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I like it with the two L's and the E. Uh, it's more elegant. So, um, so thanks, mom and dad. Yeah, no, it's more. It's more. It's more L again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. So, uh, anyways, today on the episode we have another all two interview. Um, Matt and I talked to Amir Karangi, um, an actor who has appeared in he appeared in 1989's Batman. He was in Night at the Museum, uh, Secret of the Tomb, uh, hmm. the TV show Scorpion. Um, he was in uh, NCIS Los Angeles. In guest roles, guest role on Mom, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Silicon Valley, Shameless, Dead to Me, um, Grey's Anatomy, NCIS. <clears throat> he was in the movie wow. Spree, which just came out uh, this year. <clears throat> and uh, you will know him probably best right now as uh, Saeed, <clears throat> one of the associate the, our Cloud Nine associates on the TV show Superstore. Mm-hmm. Yes, which he is hilarious on, in my opinion. Yes, um, yeah. He was a great interview. Um, really nice guy. Very talented too. He uh, took a lot, some time off of acting and stuff. He tells us a little bit about teaching and things of that nature too, and um, learned a lot from him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good interview. It's, if you if you got the time to dedicate to it, really, you should really listen to it just intensely because it's, he's really good, very good storyteller. He's a little bit, um, he's a little bit self effacing, humble, and stuff yeah. like that. But he he's really really uh, talented and skillful at what he does. Yes, <clears throat> and we got some good stories here for you, and um, hope you enjoy this. Uh, right now, here's our interview with Amir Karengi. First off, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, what uh, what? How's uh life treating you these days? I know oh. the craziness of twenty twenty. Uh, apart from the craziness of twenty twenty, uh, life's treating me very well actually. It's it, it's been it's been odd because you know um, you, you look at the negative side of what's been happening this year, which is horrendous. It's horrible for a lot of people. But I've been trying to make the best of it, really. You know, um, just just catching up with old friends on Skype, you know, because I've had more time. But yeah. A lot of us had more time. And and so it's given me an opportunity to catch up with all the things that you, when you're too busy with life, you ignore people that mean a lot to you. And so I've caught up with a lot of old friends. I used to live in UK, so I've had a lot of Zoom calls with colleagues and friends in the UK. And so that's been that's been a, a positive reinforcement of, you know, that everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> you have to. So, uh, right. so, uh, where, where did you, gr- you grew up in the UK or did you? Uh, no, 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 there no. I, there? I, I, uh, yeah, no, this <laughs> is, this is a crazy thing. No, I've had a very eclectic upbringing cause I, I grew up 
I grew up up, up until the age of 13, 14. I grew up in, in Tehran. Oh, wow. Uh, in Iran. I know. And, um, and then I uh, went to high school in Pennsylvania, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, uh, and then went to college in D.C. Uh, and then went to – my wife's British, so I, my wife, that's why I went to U.K. Gotcha. went to U.K. And then uh, was there for 25, 26 years, almost working there. Most of my adult life, really, you <laughs> know, my work life. And then came over here in 2011. Oh. Moved to LA in 2011. Oh wow! Yeah, so I know. So it's been it's very. Quite, you know, what I mean, I've lived lots of different places. That's quite, a, right. quite a journey there. Yeah, the um, quite a journey. How did you? Uh, um, when did you uh, get started in acting? Right. Well, I <laughs> my major my major at GW was pre med. <laughs> 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 and but that was because it was a bit of a you know sort of almost like you want to call a family tradition a family sort of wish that you know that's what you do that's what you're going to go into but then i found myself studying you know reading literature more <laughs> and reading plays and being much more interested in theater and and i thought look i, I just got to take some acting classes which is what i did and that was it i was hooked so actually i didn't start so much later i said you know i think i was about 18, 19. However, I started d d d st uh, learning directing as well, uh, studying directing. And I directed my first play at 19. So I was really into directing um, big time for a long time and teaching and directing. So most of my career, really, a, a big proportion of it has been teaching and directing because I ran a drama school in UK for many years. Oh, wow. um, it, um, that was run by the president was Dame Judy Dench. I was oh, the head wow. of acting and Dame Judy Dench was the president. Yeah, that was, I was the head of acting, the head of postgraduate courses for seven years, head of the whole uh, acting department for another seven years. So, so I was like 14 years running those BA and MA programs over there. Um, and so I was really heavy into education and drama education, particularly theater though. So it was yeah. my background was mostly in theater. In UK, you know, I did some, film and TV work, it, it was not that huge for my age. I don't have a huge, uh, as it were, a resume, you know, mm -hmm. as they could say, CV over there, a resume um, up to a certain point because I left acting for 16, 17 years yeah. while my kids were growing up because I didn't want to gallivan all over the country doing gigs, you know, for not much money. And I just thought I need to, I need to have a steady work <laughs> of teaching, you know, full-time teaching. And once they got into college and went to college, uh, I thought, well, I could go back into it. That's when I went back into acting. So yeah, I've got a gap in my, yeah. you know, well, I mean, my career. It's good reason. I mean, which I'm happy yeah. about. So, yeah. To be honest, I'm very mm -hmm. happy about it because I'm glad that I spend that time raising my kids and you know paying attention to that so yeah because yeah, if you m miss those years you miss them growing up and then you're you know oh can't get yeah those back. absolutely you can't get them back and you, know. you can't get them back so. yeah um i saw um early on in your career you were you had a part in batman <laughs> yeah i saw that on your resume yeah. i was like i i, I haven't yeah. i haven't seen the movie in a while but it is one of my favorites and i don't know if i remember you or not right. but i'd have to go back and rewatch right. it i'm a i'm a huge batman uh, fan my uh bathroom's all okay. batmaned out so i <laughs> uh, you, you won't be you won't be very impressed i've only got one line in it <laughs> i've only got one line when i come in i'm bruce wayne's wine steward that's how i'm credited bruce wayne's <laughs> wine steward so uh and i just come in and i ask him if uh, we need to open a few more cases of champagne that's about it <laughs> and that's that's in that hall of uh you know with the armors uh, all the suits of armor and that yeah. big hall if you remember that scene that's where i come in but the story behind that is hysterical because i was in london and i was at the time i think i was teaching and um suddenly my agent said uh well i've got you this meeting with uh marion doherty and that was quite impressive because i thought oh my goodness marion Do marion doherty was the head of casting at Warner Brothers for endless number of years, you know, yeah. um, and it, they even have made a film about her called uh, Casting By, which is all about her career, you know, which is a documentary film that's very successful. Anyway, so I was yeah. very impressed. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to be seen by Marion Doherty. I was in my 20s, <laughs> um, uh, the mid-20s or something. And then 
I uh, so I went to her office at Warner Brothers. We had a conversation. She was from Pennsylvania, so we had a chat about <laughs> Pennsylvania and Pitt, Pittsburgh Steelers, and you know. And uh, I didn't even do a reading or anything like that. It was just we got on just having a conversation, and she was very sweet. And I don't think you know there wasn't a part for me. I think she just liked me, and she thought. I'll just give him something. <laughs> I really, I really tru- truly think that was kind of a mercy call or something. She, she just thought, hey, I, I like this kid. Let me, let's just give him this one line or something. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it was because it just didn't make sense. I just came in and asked this question. When I, I thought that doesn't help the story or anything, you know. <laughs> and, and I was so nervous. I was so nervous because I had never done anything of that scale and I'd never actually encountered stars that big and suddenly I'm like in makeup with uh, Michael Keaton you know <laughs> and I'm like and I see Jack Nicholson you know and I'm like oh my god you know there's Jack Nicholson there's Michael Keaton I mean you know and um so um so it was it was nerve-wracking but yeah. hey <laughs> it was, it's, it's a good thing to have on your resume. I mean, yeah. it, it, it does pop up. It yeah, comes up. I know. I know. I, I love the fact that I'm credits. It's it's fine. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be on there. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was looking at your uh, internet movie database and saw that, and I was like, oh wow. Uh, um, no, uh, yeah. ancient. Yeah, that was the first one. But I'm telling you, the set was the the most inspiring part of that was actually seeing the set at Pinewood because. It was from the front as you went into it. It was Gotham City. It it, it was humongous. I'd never seen a set that big. It was very tall. It was very high up because I had to have the high rises and everything, you know. It was, it was unbelievable. And I remember at the time it was costing them 60,000 pounds a week to maintain it. Oh, wow. (laughs) There was just a maintenance cost, just the security maintenance. (laughs) And and we're going back to 1988. Yeah. So that's. So. Is that insane? Yeah. I don't know. Um, how uh, when you when you got back into um, acting? Um, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I might want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, the uh, teaching sure. as well. But uh, what? How did you uh, get back in? Like, what uh, what drew you back in? Right. Well, that was that was the scary part because you know if you've been away from it uh, for sixteen, seventeen years, you've been just directing many theater and stuff, and suddenly you're trying to get back into acting, particularly for. In a, in a medium you're not terribly comfortable with, which is film and television. and wasn't my medium at all. And um, so I thought, oh, what the hell? I've got nothing to lose. I, when I, um, I had a period when I had to sort of the transition period from moving from UK to, to Los Angeles. That's when uh, I got an agent in UK for that. Like it was a six month period. She got me two jobs, two gigs in that period. And I was like, Oh, okay. Maybe I still remember how to do this. You know? <laughs> so that was kind of a bit of an encouragement. It was a bit, I mean, it was small jobs. One was a commercial and the other one was, you know, a small, uh, a small job. But, but I thought, Oh, okay. At least I kind of, I'm getting it. I, I, I still can get the jobs. And when I came to LA, I had to start from, of course, kind of scratched again in a way because nobody knew me here. I had to go and get an agent, get a manager, and get a manager first and get an agent. And so went through that whole process, you know, and go through a lot of auditions. And just what I realized was that it was a little bit different. The expectations were different. The system was different. Obviously, auditioning for film and TV was totally different than theater. So that that took in a different genres auditioning for it. So I had to kind of, although intellectually you understand this stuff because you teach it, I had to in practice work on it a lot um and uh after like a i would say six six months seven months i got my first independent film and that was that was fun i just thought oh this is great it was an independent film i had a good part in it it was a good uh second lead and that was fantastic it was um uh, stepping high um you know yeah uh uh, and then from then it just kind of picked up. I got NCIS LA, you know, guest starring in NCIS LA, and that just kind of gradually picked up. Uh, and as the casting directors get to know you and the industry gets to kind of get familiar with you, but LA has been very kind to me. I have to say, I'm very, very grateful because to start to restart a career at 50 is insane, <laughs> <laughs> you know? which is what I had to do, which is what I did. But uh, so I'm very lucky and very grateful. Really. That's that. awesome. Uh, when you were uh, when you were like teaching, uh, 
what would um what was like the best advice you were able to give to like your students about acting uh well, the, one of the best advice is that, you know, all the training that they do, uh, it will not kick into, uh, into fruition uh, unless they actually understand uh, the applied part of it, which is when they go literally into the audition room and they go into a rehearsal room and they're working with directors. So I used to kind of reverse engineer a lot of the teaching, you know, to go back from because sometimes people teach theoretically and what happens is. Uh, you learn a lot of things, but you have no idea how to apply it. Yeah. And in the real world, in the real world, it's just theoretical. It doesn't work for you, you know. So I work it the other way around. And um, and so the best advice was that if you don't learn how to be very relaxed and confident when you're working and know that you are the best version of that character at that moment, that's the way you need to think, that this is it. I, this is the way it should be done. Even when you go into the audition room, that you're not auditioning, you're showing them how it's done. You're showing them in rehearsal or in a production. You're actually doing the performance, basically. You know, you're performing right now. This is it. This is your performance. That's what you go in. And that's your audience, and you're taking care of them. They're not judges. They're not sitting there in judgment in your audition. Although they are, you need to have that mindset, you see. If you don't have that mindset, somehow you're diminished. There is no way you can bring in all your resources and tap into all your resources, and particularly creative resources, because you're too uptight. You're too worried. You, you're worried about the results. Uh, if you feel that the results are already done, you've got the job, this is your performance, you will always do better. You may not get the job, but you will, <clears throat> over the long run, you will always, always do better. Did you... So, uh... Did you do much uh, acting on stage yourself then too, or yeah, 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 yeah? I did. I did a lot of yeah. I did a lot of did a directing and a lot of acting on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. over <laughs> here and in and in uh, and in UK as well. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, did quite a bit of that. I think um, um, there's something cool about theater where you have the instant gratification of the audience like reacting to your thing. I mean, I, yeah. I, I used to do theater. I for years but i haven't done it in probably about 10 years or so but yeah oh wow did you yeah, yeah. so you you know exactly that buzz and yeah that, and and also you know how the rehearsal process <clears throat> is different uh i feel that you're a lot more in control of your performance once you're on you're on it, that's the version the audience mm -hmm. is going to see that night yeah. you know you're not going to have ten, uh, five different takes or 10 different takes where the editor picks <clears throat> the what the performance that they feel is right or the you know what i mean yeah. you are you're on stage who's going to mm -hmm. stop you you can do what you want and there's a <clears throat> there's an empowerment in that i i kind of like that I, I, and i'm sure you felt that when you were doing it oh yeah and it's like every performance is its own thing even of the same show each one's different absolutely yeah. right everyone yeah. is different in its own way it's got its own yeah character in there yeah, yeah true um did you have any sure. good any questions here, Matt, that you wanted to ask before I move on <laughs> to uh, more questions? Well, I just kind of wanted to touch. I just kind of wanted to touch on what you just said a little bit a few minutes ago about like sure. just um, feeling like you're doing a performance, not an audition, because like yeah. just from like a sort of anecdote, I've had like just like a very like minimal number of short roles and like some you know indie films, and uh -huh. I don't even I don't even view myself as an actor. And so, like for me, it was just I, it, there was really no pressure, and I just 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 do the delivery, and it wasn't like I wasn't like Good. shaking and like you know stuff like that. Right, and I'm sure you were much better than some people that were like really trained actors that you know highly trained. They were worried if somebody right, yeah. trained and worried. <laughs> They're not going to be any good. They're just going to look, do you know what I mean? They're just going to look terrible because, um, but you probably came across really natural and comfortable. Yeah, because I was. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm yeah. not an actor. So, like, <laughs> um. It's great. So, I, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very odd thing because, you know, it all depends on the genre as well. And this is the difficulty because, you know, with certain genre, because people think acting is all the same fundamentally it, but you work with different genre and procedurals of different than state arms do and it's very different than gritty real shows you know um, because you, there is natural behavior and then there is comedic performance and then there is character 
based performances, highly character based performances, eccentric character. But you know, there's uh, and procedurals have like a different rhythm and different sitcoms and different rhythm. So those little nuances to get used to those nuances is the tricky part a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, what uh, what was like the first uh, bigger role that you did after you got back into acting? I know you were on like Scorpion and some other things for a little uh, while. Uh, yeah, no, I, th- I think the first big one was actually well, uh, when I got back into acting, it was that partly that. Uh, well, in terms of circulation, I would say the guest starring on NCIS LA. Okay. That was that was big, yeah. Because yeah, it was a good. It was uh, I was in it all the way through the episode. The, the the central core of the emotional story was my character, so that was great. And it was work was fantastic working with those guys. Is is great, yeah. And uh, uh, working on a procedural, you said is different than like a sitcom or anything like that. Uh, what's the yeah? What would you say is like the major difference? Like the is it just this? Well, well, sitcoms have a particular rhythm that you need to be aware of, you know, that, that the, the, the comedic timing needs to be maintained. And it, this is like a short version of an answer uh, yeah. without getting into it too but much. Yeah. You know what I mean, because you got a lot of techniques in comedy, like reversals, change of tone, you know what I mean? Yeah. And people don't notice what goes into it, but what makes something funny, a lot more goes into it than what people think. And I know sometimes mm-hmm. it happens naturally with actors, but that's a result of a lot of stuff they've accumulated in terms of technique. You know what I'm saying? Technique yeah. disappears when you know it, right? You mm-hmm. don't think of it as technique. It just <laughs> happens. And they think, oh, so-and-so's got good timing. Yeah, but that person's worked on that timing. Maybe, <laughs> you know, for a long time. It didn't just happen. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so uh, so th- there is that with the sitcoms. Procedurals tend to be, again, depending on what role you've got. Like if you've got a guest starring, okay, so perhaps the emotional core of the story is your responsibility to a certain extent. But if you're... Uh, if you're co-starring, if you guest starring, that's the emotion. If you're co-starring, you're not. If you're co-starring, you're a tangent storyline. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's an offshoot, and and mm-hmm. so you don't want to be. You want to deliver and move on. You want to deliver the story. It's about storytelling at a certain pace. Not it's a not. It's not all about you. <laughs> uh, so if you become very indulgent as an actor, if you see what I mean, and you you shift the focus of the whole story, which you can't do. So you want to know, I think one of the things is just knowing exactly what the job is. I always tell the students, it's, it's almost like getting um, somebody in to do some job for you in your house. You know, you're going to get a plumber in or something. Um, you don't want a plumber coming in and doing more plumbing than necessary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want him to put a bathroom in every room. That's not the case. You want him <laughs> to know what the job is. So you gain more confidence in that plumber if they come in, a professional one would come in and they will assess what the job is before they tell you, you know, mm-hmm. how much it costs and what equip before they decide how much it costs and how much equipment they need and what technique they need to use. You see, whereas an amateur, enthusiastic amateur plumber, as an amateur, enthusiastic actor, will come in and wants to do all of it. You know, <laughs> oh, great, I'm going to do this and I'm going to build that for you and I'll do. And then eventually they'll mess it up anyway. You know, everything will leak and you got disaster. And, you know, so I think that's the difference between because bottom line is that when you're actually in the profession, uh, we all know um, time is money and you have to deliver regardless of how you feel about the artistic merit of what you're doing, that's your sacrament. You just got to deal with that. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear about that. You, you got to, and sometimes you have time to deal with it. Sometimes you don't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you kick yourself. You watch, you watch something you did and you think, oh my goodness, I hope people know I know better than that. I'm not that bad, <laughs> honestly. I know better. I know better, but I just didn't have, there was no opportunity because they gave me a line last minute. I had no time to rehearse. We had we were short on time in terms of the takes, you know what I'm saying? And I wasn't a I wasn't the lead, so I couldn't actually afford to require more takes. Yeah. Which is also one of the difficulties, as you all know. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know. Because they shoot you first a lot of times. You see the lower you are in the ranking, the fir- you go first and you get less takes. <laughs> so so your performance can somewhat so it's not an excuse, but it's a reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's face it, that does happen. Um we, anyway, I don't know if I answered your question. Oh no, that that I, was I, I veered off. That was perfect. I, I went off on a tangent. <laughs> so I mean, ba- basically, I think I think you know the the main thing is is you got to have focus on what you're doing and not try to draw away from the 
focus of the story absolutely in a way yeah too. and, and yeah. know exactly what you need to deliver you yeah. know i think a lot of times these people do too much they they, they want to do too much they want to show off and do too much and it's like no serve the material serve the story and serve the text you know serve what the writer is trying to do here it's it's really not about you it's about the whole story and if you take that into consideration i think you'll you come across better you serve serve the story better yeah, I mean, you can tell when somebody's trying to make it all about them, and it shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, sometimes the over-the-top performances or, or sometimes it can get annoying. Yeah, I know. Like they're in a different. Yeah, I mean, tone. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I worry about that in my performance all the time because I think sometimes it is over the top with Said, but you know, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to judge it. You know, from performance to performance, it varies. You know. That's the that's the honest truth of it. <laughs> See, um, yeah, that's the other thing. Back to that, uh, we uh, we used to host. Uh, we're we're m- maybe getting back into it eventually, but we used to host a superstore podcast as well. On top of this one, and oh, wow. um, yeah, we right. we were going episode by episode, but then we kind of fell behind. So we uh, we're only in like the second season. So, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, oh, wow. be- be- before you came in, so <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, way before. Yeah, I came in season four. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, how did you uh? How did you get the role of Saeed on there? Oh, that's the funniest thing because it was so like, you know, you go to auditions that mm-hmm. you um, oh, you have two, three f- callbacks. You have the producer session. You have this, that and the other. You know, you're stressing. You're, oh, I really want it. Do I get it? Not. This mm-hmm. was literally the day before uh, my agent said, oh, you got an audition tomorrow. I said, oh, I've got classes. I'll go in between my classes. I literally went between my classes um and um i went uh to the audition and it was um uh, sides from like uh not the first episode i was supposed to do but three episodes down it was the sides were the one uh with a prayer when i do the prayer and and she's pumping milk and yeah. i'm doing <laughs> when amy is pumping <laughs> and and i pray yeah i pump while he prays that one <laughs> yeah and uh, that's a good one <laughs> uh, yeah yeah, yeah. And so that was the one I auditioned for. And uh, that was it. There was no callback. I, I just went back home. They called and they said, you got it. But it was a possible recurring. Yeah. It was a possible recurring. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I only had one line. And when I went on set and I did that one line, they laughed. And then the writers <laughs> came over and they gave me another line right there. And I did that one. They liked it. And... Um, I got the feeling, oh, okay, this possible recurring, it seems like they like <laughs> what I'm doing. And, and lo and behold, they call me back again and say, recurring, recurring. And then I've done now 40 episodes. Wow. <laughs> so uh, to, as of today, as of today, 40 episodes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, um, then, oh, sorry. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of, speaking of like how you're talking about like showing off and delivery, like one of my favorite moments in that episode is where, you just walk by Amy and you just point to like your prayer rug, like to signal that it's time for her to like pump. And it's just like, it, it was oh, very yeah. subtle. It wasn't like, it, it, oh, it wasn't it's like, like it's, you know. It's that time, Amy. Yeah, it's that time, Amy, that yeah. one. Yeah. You kind, of like, kind of like point to the prayer rug and then she's like, oh, well, I pump, he prays, it's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was hysterical. That was funny. Um, that was funny. So, uh, speaking of Amy, um, America left the show recently. Um, is that yes. changing the changing the way the set is or anything? Or, uh, well, everybody's obviously everybody's very very sad to see her leave. She'll yeah. be sorely missed. Do you know what I mean? She was a she's, she's a wonderful uh, wonderful lady. She's a she's a force of nature. Yeah. What, what she gets done is unbelievable to me. She is. She really is a force of nature. I mean, she's politically active, socially active uh lots of lots of causes she's always involved she's a mother of two kids you know she runs a family mm-hmm. and she, she runs the show she's executive producer and she directed some shows and she's acting in it so <laughs> yeah. unbelievable but you know and uh she was lovely so so it, it, we miss that obviously we miss a, a lot of things about her but people have been very good to keep uh keep everything going the set's been it's it's been a very very happy set. Obviously, with the pandemic situation, COVID, um, we had something like a fifty four page procedural document on the changes. Oh wow! At Universal, in terms of production, <laughs> oh yeah, and we had an hour seminar 
we had an hour seminar to go through those 54 page document mm-hmm. uh, the, 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 you know for four pages and um, I get tested every day oh wow even if I'm not working even if I'm not working I oh. get tested every day yeah oh I just I have to go to the studio get tested <laughs> and come back and even if I'm not working on that day mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, we get uh, the, the temperature checked twice a day, tested every day. So that's that's different. And, and there's a lot of um, visors and masks and distancing and all of that stuff, of course. So, yes, it has on that score. It's changed quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> but people are dealing with it. And I think the writers are doing an amazing job coping with it, to be honest with you. They have uh, decided on we've decided on masked and unmasked areas uh, for filming purposes only not when we're off yeah. camera off camera it's all masked but when mm-hmm. um, the, the 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 camera is on because we have distance it's set up so we have distance and because we're all tested literally every day uh we take the masks off and that's only in like let's say the break room situations or when it's not around customers of course so those have changed mm-hmm. um but, uh, but the writers are doing – I thought they had so much uh, – I thought there was a lot of pressure on them for the first two episodes, to be honest, because uh, coming back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at the changes they had to deal with. You know, there was that passage of time thing. And then there was um, Amy's character, you know, Amy leaving, you know, uh, America leaving. And then there was the pandemic, right? <laughs> Uh, it was just way, 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 way too much, you know. Uh, but I think they did a great job trying to address it personally. Yeah, I, I anyway. think it's good that they yeah. that they address it in the show because if if yeah. they would have ignored it, it would have felt weird on that show. I think. I think yeah. so. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. So I think they were they were also struggling with that or trying to think. Oh, do we do we do it? So they had to. They had to address it, and it's mm-hmm. good because now it's done. You know, so we yeah. can get back on on track. Yeah. I mean, especially on yeah. a show where the characters are essential workers in, uh, you know, right. in the world. So, you yeah. know, yeah, I, I work at a Walmart. Absolutely. I work at a Walmart myself. So I, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I've been there for 10 right. years, 10 years. So that's probably right. one of the reasons I relate to the show pretty well, even <laughs> though I don't really deal with customers because I work at night. But um, right. And so when we're closed most of the time, but uh, the. Uh, right. But but it but it's pretty accurate to the way that the life of a superstore in the real world is, which I think is a wow, good way that's to, good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and, that's what people are saying because yeah. that's the difficulty because they have to keep it accurate, but nevertheless, it's comedy, so it needs yeah. to be. You know, it's all of those little elements, all those uh, little quirks that we all have, has to be highlighted a little bit more. You know, otherwise yeah. it won't stand out. It won't be funny. So it's um yeah, it's true. I mean, it uh, it's true. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> No, no, no. I was going to yeah. say they do pick up. They're really, I think they're really acutely aware of a lot of, lot of tiny little issues that mm. come to the surface in those sort of places, you know, and just socially. So they, they're constantly addressing very topical stuff, aren't they? Yeah. The I, writers. I think, um, I think the, one of the, one of the great things too about the show is the diversity of the cast of characters on there too. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's rare to see, I mean, it's starting to get a little bit better with shows like like that and like Brooklyn Nine Nine and other shows that actually have a diverse right. cast. But it's it's yeah. it's good to see now <laughs> that TV's starting to go that direction because most of the time it was people that you know look like me, but um, <laughs> you know, white guys. <laughs> that was it. So yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad that no, it, no. I yeah. mean, it's it's yeah. good. I mean, one way or the other. I think yeah. the important the balance is always important. I think it's the balance. You can go too far one way or the other, but I think the balance is and, important. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. I feel. And with and with Superstore, yeah. I mean, it's 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 very realistic in the fact that you know you don't have you know and, and no, nobody's a, nobody's really a stereotype either, which is good too, which I I love about that about the writing and oh good yeah good. Good, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. That's good to hear as well. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. That's great. Hello, I'm Tom. And I'm Brian. Hosts of Be Hero Fights. Home of the greatest debate of our time. We tackle the tough topics such as Fortnite vs. Call of Duty. McDonald's vs. Burger King. John Wick vs. <laughs> Wait, is, is that really fair? Nevertheless, join us weekly on Spotify, Apple, Google, and pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. And hear the madness ensue. And as always, fight on. 
Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Cullen the second from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay. Anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter. Then you should definitely check this out, or I might get sad. And when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. Yeah, so I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah, no one can really. So um, yeah. So, so check out a uh, Super Story podcast right here, where you get this podcast, Super Story podcast. So you uh, you said you grew up in uh, Tehran. Um, how was yeah. yeah? When when you uh, when you left, was it was it um, under good circumstances or bad circumstances or anything like that? I was just wondering. Good question. It yeah. was it was it was starting to go a little bit crazy. Yeah, it was starting to go a little bit crazy, and it's bizarre that at that age I kind of picked up stuff and I thought, uh, you know what? This I don't see my future like being able to survive here like this. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't see my future here. And uh, my my uncle was already uh, a doctor in Pennsylvania, uh, so I didn't leave with my parents. My parents still stayed. This was when I left. It was before the revolution. So, uh, but my parents mm-hmm. stayed, and so I was the only one. And then they said, like you know, so I left, and then I lived with my uncle when I went to high school in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a doctor there, a radiologist, and so I, I stayed with him. Um, but. He, uh, yeah, so I then then the revolution happened, which was horrific for everybody. And my parents were there during that time, and then they had to get out. Well, well, the, my mm-hmm. dad had to send the rest of my family out while he was still dealing with stuff. Um, and then uh, he he managed to come over to states a couple of times, and then the last time he went back, they wouldn't let him leave, mm. and he got stuck there. Uh, he got stuck there and he got stuck there for 12 years before he passed away. So we mm-hmm. couldn't see him the last 12 years mm-hmm. of his life. Oh, none of wow. us, cause I couldn't go yeah. back cause I was, I wasn't allowed to go back. They would take me straight because I was the first born and they had problems beef with him, the new government, mm-hmm. you know, for no mm-hmm. reason apart from the fact that he was, uh, mm-hmm a policeman in the previous government you know he was in the national but he wasn't political at all he was Mm -hmm. just in the national guard and he was also he had some business you know but there was nothing you know so anyway 12 but it happened to a lot of people we were still one of the luckiest because a lot of his friends were just literally like i know he had friends where he'd gone to dinner with them the two brothers Mm -hmm. there were two brothers he they were his friends he went to dinner with them everything was fine the next morning he heard they'd been taken out and shot Oh, wow. Like, they were like that. There were summary executions happening all the time. So we were freaked out. for, for And then, but 12 years of waiting for him to be able to get out, and they never let him out, and he passed mm. away, bless him. So that was a traumatic moment in um, my family's life, a big, big, big traumatic moment. But everybody was touched by that. However, you realize the value of democracy when you go through that stuff. I, I voted my first American elections, to be honest, this year. <laughs> oh, wow. This was my first voting. Oh, yeah, because I was in a UK pass. I was <laughs> yeah. on a UK passport. I only went on American passport last year. I was on a UK passport, you know, and mm-hmm. always had American residency, but like, you know, UK mm-hmm. passport. Um, so, um, so that was kind of exciting. Uh, and, and just to defend it, I don't think people realize the value of it until they've been under a, a government like I was for those 13, right. 14 years where you feel like, oh, my goodness, like you can be taken out and shot any time right. just because you said the wrong thing, just because you're holding the wrong book, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and uh, and it happens all over the world. And people get mm-hmm. very, you know, they get very comfortable in the West and they're just like, oh, everything is good and we can mess around. No, you can't. You've got to take mm-hmm. democracy uh, mm-hmm. and, and uh, the, the, the people's referendum very, very, very seriously. Yeah. It's yeah. So, so many people have fought so hard for it. 
Sorry, I know I get. Oh no, no, go ahead. Because that's, that's, that's <laughs> I've, I've lived through the opposite. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've lived through, yeah. and my family has lived through it. And you know, um, I mean, the rest of my family. It took them five years to get out. So I didn't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it took a long time. But anyway, yeah, because we have a lot of so, friends from from Iran, and they've told us, you know, pretty much the same similar stories. Same, similar stories. Like we had one friend uh, who she she got out, and then. Um, Someone had, um, I guess, seized the, her and her husband's home. I, don't, I think they just took the home. They just, what, what's the word? Um, oh, yeah. Re, they did that with my what, dad's house. The word, they use a fancy word for it. It's basically just stealing a home, but they re yeah. something. I can't think of the word right now. But um, I know I know exactly. Requisitioned or re- requisition or re- Yeah. And, yeah. Um, someone had um, found out, I guess, their phone number in the United States and then called them from that home or something like that and then i think the government found out about that and they were like trying to like almost like spy on them from iran to their new home in america so it's like like even out oh, yeah. of the country they're trying to harass them like yeah <clears throat> oh they had their tentacles their tentacles reach far and wide um they've killed people outside the mm-hmm. country they've assassinated people outside the country it's pretty yeah they're pretty Sad. scary they're pretty scary and uh, th- those stories, yeah, they exist. It's absolutely true. Yeah. And they took they took my dad's house away, our family mm. house. They uh, he built it himself. Mm. They took it away. They just took it. They took everything. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I it's uh, as simple as that. Yeah. About, yeah. <laughs> about about twenty years ago, I became I became a Baha'i. So I. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So oh, wow. so that's how we know a lot yeah, of uh, Iranian people. And um, sure, sure. So yeah, it's. Uh, some of the stories I, I did a yeah. uh, I did a folklore paper on the history of uh, a lot of Baha'is coming from Iran back when I was in college. Did and, you? Uh, yeah, it was, oh, how it was really interesting. Oh, yeah. brilliant! Oh, yeah. I bet it so, is. Yeah, I bet it's it is. Just sad. Some of the oh, stories, wow. though, where they, they yeah. escape as a child and go all all around the world to finally get to where they landed and ended up. Yeah. So difficult. Yeah. So many people were so badly treated. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah, the Baha'is were, were really badly treated. Oh, well, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure they still uh, are, unfortunately, and so are a lot of people there, unfortunately, and hopefully things yeah. get better. But, yeah, I mean, it is it is what it is, unfortunately. <laughs> and just we got to be yeah. glad we live in a country where we can vote and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. People should yeah, realize this. Um, you got some. Not to get too political, but you just yeah, you know, I've started to notice these these people who are trying to intimidate people. It reminds me of the stuff I see on the news from quote third world countries, like you know yeah. the cars and the caravans and the flags and the people with guns, like really meant to right. intimidate you, like saying like you can't live the way you want to live. Like we're going to decide for you. I you know. know. I know <laughs> that's not the democratic way, is it? It really isn't. No. It's, I think if people just chill. And I mean, I do think both sides have to see one another's points. I mm-hmm. do think there's a lot of disenfranchisement on the part of people. And that's what mm-hmm. happens. They they turn, they become more reactionary, I mm-hmm. think, people, when they're disenfranchised. You know, it's almost like revenge, mm-hmm. right? So they lose sense of uh, sense of balance and, 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 and uh, uh, basically logic, right? Because they're, they're, they're acting emotionally, purely emotionally. Um, and then all hell breaks loose when that happens, of course. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, we just gotta <clears throat> gotta realize we all bleed the same color, and we all kind of, you know, we all are we're all human. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We yeah. all bleed red. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, back to Superstore, really quick. Um, how uh, how great is it to work with such a like great? talented cast of uh comedians and actors you know it, it really is one of the things I, I always enjoy is learning from other people like even when i was teaching i learned from the students that would do something it's like oh this is great i'm learning from you guys as well mm-hmm. and um and so i love it it's such a great learning experience for me because they all have their very distinctive personalities um they're all extremely <coughs> friendly they're very well they were always very welcoming and friendly so it's wonderful it's very much of a family atmosphere, and they all uh, they all come from very eclectic backgrounds, and and so <laughs> super talented. It's wonderful. I mean, they're all really really funny, and uh, 
and and some are great improvisers uh and so you have a lot of great laughs in between scenes as well <laughs> i'm not one of those people i'm not by nature i'm not funny do you know what i mean but i don't think <laughs> but some people <laughs> but some of them are actually hysterically funny you know it, yeah. off character they're very funny so that's always fun that's really fun yeah i think yeah, you know like it's a lot of fun like lauren ash and other people are just really I mean, talented. I, is, I saw her years ago oh. before she was ever on TV at Second City up in Toronto, and oh, it was, right. she yeah, was yeah. she was great up there. And then I Super, forgot I saw yeah. her, and then I saw her on TV and realized it was the same woman. And I was like, oh wow, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, <laughs> she is such a pro. Lauren is such a uh, Lauren Ash is such a pro. She really is. And again, she does a lot of things. She had her own podcast during the pandemic. She's doing. <laughs> uh, she was doing lots of stuff, and. Um, and she also writes. She's she's uh, you know she's written uh, the odd episode. I think Lauren. Yeah, she has. Yeah. She's written some of the episodes in the past. Uh, so she's a good writer. She's she's very very good. She's so professional and she's so on it. Um, amazing, amazing, very very good. She's very fast with processing things and uh, you know on set like such a good problem solver and you know in terms mm -hmm. of the work and, and 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 processing direction so very impressive yeah um, i mean they're all really oh yeah they, good. yeah um it's a very talented cast um i mm. i think uh I do. I, I do think you are funny, though, on there, definitely. So, yeah, just letting you know, you are funny. So, I mean, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, 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 the character. I mean, I mean it, 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 in person, I'm, you know, as, yeah. a, as a regular person. I'm yeah, but, <laughs> no, no, Saeed is uh, like thank I. You. Uh, I told I told Saeed a, is funny, maybe. I told a friend I told a friend of mine that I was interviewing you, and they said that that you're like their favorite character on the show, and I was like, really? Oh, wow, that's, that's cool. Sweet. Yeah. So yeah, wow, she, she was cool. she's that's like really she's like Saeed's so funny, and I'm like, oh yeah, yes, he <laughs> he's really funny. Yeah. That's cool. that's very. I appreciate. It. Surprises me sometimes, but I appreciate it. It's yeah. Great. Hey folks, this is uh Michael E. Cullen the second um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, it's a lot we, more exciting than that, though. Yeah, so, 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 so we, we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? yeah. yeah, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh -huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, a Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too, too real. Bye-bye. Do you have dreams that you want to achieve but are scared to do so due to self-doubt, fear, and other people's criticism? I have just what you need. You need a dose of the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast where I interview guests that will motivate and inspire you to stop at nothing to achieve your dreams. And always remember, if you believe, you can achieve. Have you ever had uh, in your career any kind of challenge like where you felt like you weren't going to be able to make it in any way or anything? And yep. how, how did you yep. how did yep. you overcome that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this one. OK, I'll tell you this story. And um, uh, I tell you, I've, I've told this to students because I told them never, ever, ever to do it like ever uh, to do this like <laughs> just like never no matter what even if somebody holds a knife to your throat just don't do it it's too painful don't do this <laughs> so um this is what happened this was uh, i was much younger it was my late 20s and uh i went to a commercial audition in uk but it was for a uh, uh it was for a uh, saudi 
very expensive Kuwait Saudi bank. It was a Kuwait, yeah, I think Kuwait. Sorry, Bank of Kuwait. Yeah. So you know, so it was they were trying to advertise their um, uh, card, you know, their mm. their debit card for the ATM machine, <laughs> right? Uh, and so, but this was being filmed in Manchester, in UK, right? So I go to the audition. Now, uh, get this, I don't, I, I've studied Arabic, but I've only studied Arabic as in the way you might have studied Spanish. Uh, if you did take Spanish in yeah. high school, did you take Spanish? Not? Okay. I, I took, I, so, I, I, but yeah. I don't know, you may be good. You may be, you may be a good Spanish speaker. I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Okay. So I guess maybe I, that was a good guess. All yeah. right. So, so, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> So I could only just maybe a few words and maybe I could just kind of barely read it, right? <laughs> that was it. So I go to this audition and uh, I figured it's a commercial. I probably have one line. It'll be fine, right? I will say I can speak Arabic, right? So I go to this audition and they said, can you speak Arabic? I said, yes. And uh, But they had me doing it in English because they had nobody who was Arabic there, right? You know, and uh, but they said, oh, okay, good, you know, and um uh, I got the job. Anyway, I got the job. Uh, I, <laughs> they fly me up to Manchester. They put me up in a very, very posh hotel. You know, uh, we go to dinner. It's a beautiful dinner, and but it's a dinner and a production meeting for the next day. And <laughs> I'm looking around, and I don't see any other actors. And I'm like, where are the other actors? They're like, no, you're the only one. I'm like, okay, all right, <laughs> good. And then... Then they give me the storyboard. They put the storyboard in front of me, right? Okay. Now, obviously, the commercials are much longer than one minute in Kuwait. Okay, <laughs> it's like a it's like a three minute commercial. All right. <laughs> and they put they put a storyboard, and I see, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Oh, okay. So I'm in every shot, right? And I'm speaking. Okay. Then they give me the script, and it's a full A4 sheet of paper in Arabic. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. The, the equivalent, I would say, of a minute and a half monologue. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I literally, I was having, uh, I think, I, I, this is how precisely I remember this. Uh, we were have, I was having this beautiful Chateaubriand because I thought, hey, they're paying for it. <laughs> you know? But as soon as they showed me that, it all went right through me. I mean, I literally felt like I need to go to the bathroom right now. Okay. <laughs> So, guys, I, I almost shit myself, really. I did, you know? So I was like, this is, they're going to, they're going to kill me. They're going to, they're going to, oh, oh, on top of that, they showed me the set they had brought, they'd recreated the whole front of this bank at the studio in Manchester. So they'd spend like tens and tens of thousands. <laughs> You know, it was unbelievable. The set, like this is supposed to be Kuwait, but now it's in Manchester. And I'm just the only person on this commercial. Good, they got a lot of money, those guys. You know that. So <laughs> I thought, that's it. I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. What do I do? So I uh, I was just like having headaches. I didn't know what to do. They, I like sweating. Um, I <laughs> recognized that one person at that uh, production meeting looked Arabic and I pulled him aside and he was there actually luckily enough he was the sound guy as well and I said <laughs> I pulled him aside I pulled him aside and I said look you gotta help me here man like I did this stupid thing and it's wrong I know but I'm in big shit trouble I'm I'm look I'm just kind of opening up to you here right <laughs> you gonna save my ass could you please record this and I will learn it phonetically all night. I'll be up all night. I'll learn it. I swear. I will learn it, but just record it because I don't know what it's saying. And could you please tell me what I'm saying? Because I know from so I sat up. So he wrote it in front of each, like uh, you know, uh, each caption as you do. And I was I was up all night. I was up from nine o'clock at night till we stood. The, the shoot was like eight o'clock the next morning, and I learned it. I learned it phonetically. And you know what? I got through the day. We wrapped at five o'clock and nobody said anything. <laughs> and on the way back, I went in the bathroom and threw up, of course. <laughs> <laughs> 
and came home and you know i just you know i said never ever ever am i doing that to myself again <laughs> no way but honestly i thought it was going to be one line i didn't know they're going to give me a whole page right <laughs> a whole a whole documentary about the bank and the history oh <laughs> i'm telling you it was unbelievable it was unbelievable i've never i've never been so so if you talk about challenges that was that was really yeah. well that was a challenge and it was a very it was a nightmare basically that's what that was but yeah i, I know they always wow. say they, they they say not to lie but i know everybody does say things like well i yeah i can ride a horse or i can uh you know no I, yeah i can shoot don't, a bow and arrow oh, but goodness. people you know <laughs> Right, you should. You don't want to be doing that. You do not want to be doing that. I yeah, agree. Then you get agree. you get roped into it, like oh shoot. Um, but what you just said though kind of does remind me a little bit about, uh, I guess, sort of like the resilience that is required to be an actor is kind of to basically be in crisis mode and just sort of manage it, and then once it's over, oh. then you grow up. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you do. Yeah. It's amazing what they, they, what you, you end up doing. I mean, a lot of times I've been, you know, actors in theater, as you know, you're sick, but it's amazing because you could have, you could have congestion, but you backstage, as soon as you're supposed to go on, it somehow clears up. <laughs> it's weird. You know, it, the adrenaline kicks in and you've got to do it because you know, you have to do it. Yeah, it's true. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, do you have any other uh, projects in the works or anything? I mean, I know right now things are probably slowed down because of COVID and everything. Uh, things things slowed down, but you know what? This is the this is the bizarre thing um, that you know. Sometimes it's feast of famine, as you know, as, yeah. as an actor, it's feast of famine. You go through phases where there's no work, and you're like, oh, audition, audition, audition. You don't get them. You get the odd one. And then suddenly, well, while I'm doing this at the moment, believe it or not, there are two other shows that wanted me to do it. <laughs> one, 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 uh, one was another recurring, and uh, another one was just a one-off uh, guest star. But there's mm -hmm. conflict. Oh no! <laughs> well, I, I know it's a good problem to have, but yeah. isn't that like isn't that typical that it's stupid? And the conflict is not when we have time off. The conflict is when the show is <laughs> on because you know we have hiatus <laughs> periods. We have the, the whole of that mm -hmm. you know uh, December to January kind of period. But no, these had to be exactly when we're showing, when we're filming the show. So, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Uh, mm. It's been it's been a little bit. Auditions have slowed down a bit, but there were there was a spat of auditions that came through, uh, a lot of self tapes, but then some Zoom auditions. <laughs> but guys, oh my goodness, Zoom auditions are problematic a lot of times. That's <laughs> what I found. I mean, yeah. not a single one has gone without a hitch of some sorts, you know, uh, always some, some problem with it. Like, uh, because, you know, especially if you've got a producer session thing with like five, six people are on there. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, did you hear, did you catch that? No, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh, oh do you want to, okay, we'll come back to, oh, we'll put you in the waiting room and we'll put you on deck later. We'll come back to you. I mean, all of that happens, you know, and as if you haven't got, you know, you're auditioning. So, um, you know, when you're in, in the audition room, before you go in, you get yourself in the zone and you go in, right? But when you're online, you got to wait on deck. It's like a virtual, you know, <laughs> entrance. And, and if that gets delayed or gets messed up, you're out of the zone, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it's a little bit, a little bit difficult. Self tapes are, of course, easier because you're more in control. Yeah. Uh, so it's been, it's, it's been tough. It's been rough for, for actors, but it's been rough for casting directors as well. I think mm -hmm. that Zoom auditions because, you know, a number of times once they forgot to tape everybody on that day of auditioning, which was a nightmare for them. Oh, geez, you know, yeah. they had everybody on Zoom, but can you imagine? They probably auditioned like 50 people that day, but they didn't tape a single person. Mm -hmm. They had to do it all over again. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I won't name names, but, you know, these things have happened. <laughs> yeah, they do happen. It's the drawbacks of technology sometimes. You forget one yeah. thing and it's gone. Yeah. Um, the, um, la I, I, one, of the, one of my favorite movies that I've seen recently, you were in uh, Spree. You had a small role in that. that oh, wow, yeah, that was that was a that was a Cab that was driver. a trip. That was a great movie. It was <laughs> very unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably That's one of the right. best yeah, movies that... I've seen in the last year. So <laughs> it's very different, wasn't it? Very yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was late at night. Yeah, 
um, it was very late at night. We, we, it was a night shoot, actually. Yeah. It was a night shoot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Actually, I had fun shooting that. That was fun because uh, the director was very cool. And, um, you know, uh, it was wonderful working with a great actor there. And uh, he was, uh, you know, they were all very nice. It was a night shoot, so I got to just drive around while... It was uh, one of those, I'm trying to remember, Go, um, the, the cameras, GoPro. Oh, yeah. It was, a Go, it was just a GoPro in the car. That's <laughs> all it was. So I, w- I was actually driving around. I was, yeah. So it was a real driving around at night. Um, just c- kept driving around. A bit of it was, part of it was partly improvised. It was just, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it was unique. Uh, I mean, how every, every angle was on a computer or on a GoPro or something like that. It wasn't, yeah. there was no yes. like real cameras. That was kind of cool. No, I, I thought it was very clever. Very yeah. Amazing to do that. That's yeah. Right. But yeah, I highly recommend that movie to anybody that's listening here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. Oh, I'm yeah. glad you liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah been... I didn't know how it was going to pan out. So I know I had only a tiny little bit in there. Obviously but, yeah. I get killed because he drives my car afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, yeah. It was... that's how I found out I've been, that's how I knew I was dead when I watched it. Believe it or <laughs> you not. You didn't know before. No, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I watched it. I thought, oh, okay. So he killed me. There's the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was an interesting movie. Um, yeah. So, uh, is there anything that you like? There's a question I like to ask people. Is there like any director or actor, or anybody that you haven't worked with that you would love to work with? Oh my goodness, so many. Yeah, a, I'm sure. On, we all have those. I know. <laughs> Just like so many. You know. <laughs> no, where do you start with that yeah. one? Oh my goodness, where do you start? Uh, I know it's a tough question. That's a. <laughs> oh, that is a, that is a tough question. Yeah. Because where do you start with that? Yeah. That 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 is a. Tough, but well, you know, obviously, okay, I, I'll make it easier for you. All the big directors, all the ones that directed all the top, how's that? Yeah. All the directors <laughs> all of them. that directed yeah. the, uh, or, or even a better answer. Okay, all the directors that directed the big blockbuster films that made the actors a hell of a lot of money, those ones, how's <laughs> yes. that? Yes. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> Spielberg, Lucas. Uh, okay. Yeah, all of those, right? No, I'm kidding, yeah. Yeah, so, but there are so yeah. many great actors out there. I think it'd be, a, it'd be, it'd be cool. but you know the the actors I love to work with. That you do get actors. Just as a general answer to that question, um, you do work with actors sometimes, and I will not name names that you feel like, oh my goodness, you really are so competitive <laughs> and so vicious that in a in a in a reverse shot, you know when they do reverse shots, yeah, you know you do you do the other one, well that you're giving them your all when it's their take and they mm-hmm. don't give you that when it's yours. They have a little grimace on the mm-hmm. face, a little yeah. lack of focus, which throws you, mm-hmm. which makes their shot better. And I caught on to this years ago and I thought, I hate actors like that. I really <laughs> can't stand actors that do that. <laughs> you know, I think it's awful when actors do that. Uh, and uh, But actors that don't do that, I mean, I did, I did something in film which I'm so embarrassed about because I was so horribly bad in it. I was really bad in it. It was it was with the opposite Michael Caine and and you know and and he uh, it, it was um, and but he was so gracious as an actor and he was big time you know two time Oscar winner. When it was my shot, he actually said, "Look, I'm not gonna because you're gonna be your eyeline is gonna be this corner of the mat box." So I'm not going to look at you. I will look down, but I'll deliver the lines from here and you want to deliver it here. And he was like, it was very early in my career and I hadn't done film and TV, you know, but, and he was just so wonderful. I, I still appreciated that. I thought, oh my God, what a wonderful, wonderful man. And this film, it was Michael Caine was in it and Roger Moore, you know, the old sort of, um, you know, the James Bond. Yeah. Um, uh, Roger Moore uh, and Michael Caine. And the two of them, and, and I was a totally unknown person coming in doing two lines in a film, right? They came over to me on the set and introduced themselves and said, welcome to the set. Mm-hmm. It blew my mind. Honestly, I was just, I was like, I love these guys because they deserve to be where they are because they're so magnanimous, so generous with their time and their attention and, and that's why they are where they're at, regardless of whoever thinks of them, of whatever people think of them as actors. So there is, but then you, you also do get sort of some talented actors that are basically assholes, unfortunately. And I've yeah. seen that as well. 
And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. So actors are like to work with those generous actors where they make you and themselves better because they're mm-hmm. collaborative. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an independent filmmaker myself, and I know that uh, it's a lot better when you have the two actors there, even if the one's off camera to yeah. interact with each other. Oh, because gotcha. it's some, I, uh, oh, absolutely. I had to refilm some lines because we changed some things on this movie that I did, and we had to refilm them four months apart, and the other right. actor was in Chicago, and we couldn't fly him in. And oh, so tough. we had to do yeah. the other guy's side, and it was just, I don't know, every time I watch that scene in the movie, I can tell, but, you know, other people probably can't tell, but I'm just like, right. I feel but like, you oh. know. I was like, I was like, I know he's, sure. I know he's acting opposite me and another actor, another uh, dir- a producer or something, not the, right. <laughs> not the uh, mm. actual actor sure. he's talking to, mm. and it, you can tell sure. if you look far enough, but, you know, it's just, it's, I know the, you got to have some kind of because a lot of acting is reacting too. I know that, so mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. a lot of it is reacting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's lovely to do. Films, I mean, films are fun to do. I did yeah. one. Of, I think one of the things that I'm proud of was one that was uh, Breath of Life, which was just a half hour film, so it's considered a short, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. But it was nominated for a BAFTA. We were nominated oh, for nice. BAFTA, and I, and I played the lead in it, so that was. Mm-hmm. I, you know, that was, I remember when the BAFTAs were on, they were showing it on UK TV <laughs> all the time, you know, and it was my clip that was mm-hmm. going around every night. And I was like really proud of it. But at that mm-hmm. time, I was so poor, I actually couldn't go to the BAFTA ceremony. The oh. director said, can you go? I did not have enough money <laughs> to actually, I'm serious about yeah. it. I didn't have enough money to buy the tux and the, and to buy the wine when I'm there because it cost yeah. 50 pounds apparently to buy. And I just did. I literally, I was that poor yeah. at that point. And I, I made an excuse to the director. I said, look, I'm not feeling well. You guys go. <laughs> and, and then I watched it on TV and it's like, but hey, it's the way it is. Well, at least <laughs> you're in a nominated film. I mean, <laughs> that's great. That's what you go through yeah. up and down. Oh, no, I know. I was very thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and the film that won, the, the, the lead was James Fox, so I didn't feel too bad. James <laughs> Fox is a very famous British actor. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> he was in Gandhi. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah. Don't wanna, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, what, uh, no, that's fine. Yeah. You know, where, uh, <laughs> Um, where could people find you online if, if they're interested or anything or what, you know, or anything that, you know, you want to tell anybody before we oh. let you go? Oh, well, they, they're, they're online. Uh, or, or anywhere. Actually, I don't, I, I don't do a website at yeah. all, but oh, that's uh, yeah. uh, as in I don't do yeah. a website. So they can, whatever I suppose comes on, you know, I put up on Instagram, you okay. know, Instagram at, uh, at a Karangi. That's what I'm a Karangi. It's at a Karangi. That's that, it. That, my, my last name. That works. A K O R A N G Y. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Instagram is the one I use. I use suppose. Most. Yeah. Uh, mostly. That's cool. Yeah. yeah um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll nice. be sure to share that in the notes. So if people want to, <laughs> you know, say anything to you after. Wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. This was very generous. Yeah. Of you. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's, uh, it's really lovely to meet you both. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, Mike and Matt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I hope, uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. I yeah. hope that was all right. I hope that's what you wanted. Oh, oh yeah. And I oh, hope, yeah, the, hope the rest of 2020 goes well for you and the future as well. <laughs> so. <laughs> Same with both of you. Good luck with your careers and, you know, all your interests in, in films and filmmaking and acting and all that stuff. Thank Great. you. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely to meet you both. Take you care. Too. Have a good night. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Okay. That was our interview with Amir Karangi. Um, that was a great interview there. Um, had a lot of good insight. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, so now that, uh, the world is moving on here in 2020 and democracy might not be dead. <laughs> um, I'm hoping the world enjoys it. Um, hopefully things start to get better in the world. Um, not going to hold my breath, but um, <laughs> yeah. What's on your mind, Matt? What have you been uh, up to lately? Just, um, you know, just been following politics a lot. It's um, like, you know, as per usual, um, <clears throat> Still working on, you know, still plugging away in all of my music projects. I'm, you know, I'm working on my fifth volume of my music 
right now and just putting, you know, video clips to it and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, really, uh, you know, I didn't realize how much um, output, you know, I, I made throughout the, you know, decades or whatever. It's, that, you know, actually quite astounding. Yeah. Not, not to do my own horn, but just the fact that I didn't realize I actually made that much material because I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm on my fifth volume of stuff here. It's still got a bunch more to go through. In um, in the music, do you toot a horn at all? Uh, actually, a couple songs I do have a horn. Um, uh, is it actually, is it your own horn? Yeah, it is actually my own horn. It was my my dad's horn from from band way back. Like, okay, in the 70s. good. So so you did toot yeah. your own horn then? Yeah, but a lot of, a lot of the horn stuff is actually just samples. But yeah, there are okay. a few uh, actual recordings of me tooting. A physical horn, if you will. Is it against uh, the law to toot someone else's horn? Um, depends on the state. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the weird outro. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Maybe we should cut, we should no, cut that. <laughs> no, no, I think it's good. It's good. You know, we're, okay. we're just so, being us. But anyways, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. And in my world, I've just been uh, watching. You know. Chuck and Superstore and Brooklyn Nine Nine <laughs> constantly because I like those Beat shows. Nine. Those are my like three favorite shows to watch lately. Um, yeah, you know your comfort shows. Yes, watching your some comfort, yeah. Mandalorian, listening to some podcasts about serial killers and stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, your comfort stuff. Yes, yeah. you know, your killers. <laughs> hey, hey, I was listening to the the Behind the Bastards about the Satanic Panic. So yeah, me too. I listened to that as well. So yeah. And then before- they had the Jordan Peterson episode, so yeah, you know, really lighthearted stuff. And that is something I'll recommend to our our fans. Nothing like our show, but it's great podcast behind the bastards. Yeah, um, Robert Evans is awesome. Hopefully, we can maybe have him on as a guest someday if he's listening. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyways, anything else before we uh, wrap things up here, Matt? Uh, you know, just just be. You know, just be nice to other people. You know, be nice, be kind. Um, you know, uh, the election's over, regardless of what some people say. It's it's over. Um, just uh, you know, if you didn't like who won, oh well. Just you know, be a human being. <laughs> and just you know, uh, believe in democracy. I guess it's. I mean, it's very low yeah. bar stuff here. And believe I believe mean, in democracy if you're an American citizen. I know it's like the lowest bar possible, but uh. and if 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 you're listening to this before December fifteenth, talking about democracy, our podcast has been nominated for the best podcast um, by the Toledo City Paper. So uh, go onto their website. There'll be a link in the show notes, um, and you can vote for us. And you can vote what every day, right? Every day until December fifteenth. So can you vote? Just once a day, or can you vote like all the time throughout the day? Oh, once, once once a day, once a day. Okay, okay, gotcha. once a day per email. Okay. Got you. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not telling people to cheat or anything, yeah, but, if no, have, no, but, if, but if you have, but if you have several yeah. emails and you want to vote for us yeah. several times a day, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. Not what I used to do when <laughs> I was a member of MP3.com to get more more listens for my my songs. I definitely did not do something like that. So um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> so anyways um before we go make sure you check out our uh, show notes we've got some links to our patreon and our uh uh t public page where you can get some uh cool t-shirts to support us um and those are the best ways to do it also you know share us rate the show all that good stuff i mean and just remember, it's okay to toot your horn, but if you want to toot somebody else's horn, ask permission first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Thank you.